This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1946, for athletes who fret about food and physique, by Nancy Clark of nancyclarkrd.com, and I'm your host and narrator, Dr. Neil. Hey there, happy middle of the week Wednesday, and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I read some of the best health and fitness blogs to you, kind of like an ongoing audiobook. Now, it is Thanksgiving week here in the U.S. Today's the day before Thanksgiving, and we might be thinking about all of those wonderful foods we're about to eat tomorrow. So even though the title of this post says this is really for athletes who fret about food and their physique, I promise, especially today if you're in the U.S., you're going to find this post really, really helpful. Now, before we get to it, it is still Wednesday, and like I do every Wednesday, I want to share a little bit of inspiration with you. So here we go. Quote, Gaining control over your health and well-being is one of those times in your life that you get to be completely selfish and not feel bad about it. If you want to meet your goals, you have to make it about you. You have to make it work for you and you alone. Anything less is a setup for failure. Jennifer Hudson. All right, and with that, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. For Athletes Who Fret About Food and Physique by Nancy Clark of nancyclarkrd.com Many athletes feel pressure to have a perfect body, perfect diet, and ideally, perfect performances. The stress-inducing trait of perfectionism often pushes athletes to not only become stronger and faster, but also leaner and food-phobic. We've seen perfection play out with football phenom Tom Brady. While he is a poster child for the benefits of eating perfectly, he also has great mental strength that keeps him focused on his goals without getting sidetracked by comparisons. Most of us are a bit more insecure than Tom and end up comparing ourselves to others. Take note, to compare is to despair. Please stop comparing your physique and your food choices to those of your teammates, friends, and family. Here are strategies to help you fret less and instead gain confidence with your food choices and your physique body comparisons. They're leaner than I am. They've got bigger muscles than I do. They're prettier than I am. They've got six-pack abs, and I don't. How often do you find yourself comparing your body to that of your teammates, friends, and social media influencers? If the answer is too often, just stop it. Your body is yours. It is good enough the way it is. You want to stop criticizing your body for being too fat, too slow, too short, too freckled, and instead, Be grateful for all the good things it does for you, like run marathons, row in regattas, win soccer games, or compete in triathlons. Those thunder thighs contribute to your ability to be a strong, powerful, and successful athlete. So thank them. Few athletes have the perfect body. Even the leanest athletes complain about undesired bumps and bulges. Athletes who whine about feeling fat are more likely feeling imperfect, inadequate, anxious, or out of control. Recommendations. To achieve body acceptance, practice living on a fantasy island where you and your body are good enough, if not excellent, the way you are. If you wander off your island and start comparing yourself to others, you'll undoubtedly end up despairing. Stay on your island. When you look in the mirror, greet yourself with a welcoming smile and grateful words. With time, you will start to internalize that your body is indeed good enough the way it is. While you may never attain the perfect physique, you can still be grateful for all your body does for you. Portion comparisons. Do you eat like a bird compared to your teammates? Or maybe you feel self-conscious because you need to eat twice as much as your peers just to maintain your desired weight. At team meals or social gatherings, many athletes monitor the quantity of food others are eating. Salads and small portions tend to get praised more than lumberjack servings. They might say things like, I wish I had your discipline, or you sure do eat a lot. For athletes recovering from restrictive, dysfunctional eating, eating a sandwich, fruit, yogurt, and pretzels for lunch seems embarrassing, like way too much food, when it's really what's needed to properly fuel up for an after-school practice or after-work trip to the gym. When I educate my clients on how many calories they deserve to eat, most are flabbergasted to learn those identified as female at birth and are athletic commonly require around 2,400 calories just to maintain weight. Those identified as males at birth and are athletic may require around 2,800 calories. That's 
six to 700 calories four times a day, breakfast, early lunch, second lunch or an afternoon snack, and dinner. Recommendation. Please don't start counting calories unless it's absolutely necessary. Your body is your best calorie counter. So listen to your innate hunger and fullness cues. Eat when hungry, stop when content. Pay attention to why you stop eating. Do you think you should? Is the food all gone? Or are you actually feeling content and comfortably fed? Food comparisons. I eat only healthy foods. I avoid sugar like the plague. I wouldn't be caught dead eating french fries. In the world of clean eating, athletes feel pressured to choose the right foods. That translates into no sugar, salt, red meat, white flour, packaged foods, fat, and no fun foods. The E in eating stands for enjoyment. You want to be able to enjoy, in appropriate portions, the foods you truly want to eat. Believe it or not, it's okay to balance fun foods into an overall good diet. The goal is to consume 85 to 90% of nutrient-rich whole grains, fruits, veggies, lean proteins, and then 10 to 15% fun food. You need not eat the perfect diet to have an excellent diet. You want to eat a foundation of about 1,500 calories from a variety of nutrient-dense foods to consume the vitamins, minerals, and protein required for an effective sports diet. Because your body needs at least 24 to 2,800 calories a day, you have space in your diet for both health-promoting food and fun food. While you want to enjoy more of the best foods and less of the rest, you can balance fun foods into your sports diet. An apple is a healthy food. A diet of all apples is a very unhealthy, unbalanced diet. Recommendation. If you find yourself being judgmental about food, the problem is unlikely the food, but rather your relationship with the food and fears it will make you get fat or ruin your health. Dining out with your friends is a very healthy thing to do. A few fun meals will not ruin your health forever. Nutrition Supplement Comparisons I often counsel athletes who wonder if they can nourish their bodies with real food instead of taking supplements. As one athlete sheepishly asked, I don't take any vitamin pills, should I? My teammates take a handful of them. Let me reassure you that opting out of supplements is okay and can save you bundles of money. If you eat wisely 85 to 90% of the time, you're likely getting the vitamins and minerals and protein you need, with a few possible exceptions, like iron and possibly vitamin D. Recommendation. If you question the adequacy of your diet, consult with a registered dietitian who is board certified as a specialist in sports dietetics. They can help you learn how to choose foods based on facts, not fears, and help you fret less and enjoy life more. You just listened to the post titled For Athletes Who Fret About Food and Physique by Nancy Clark of nancyclarkrd.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. How ironic that we're talking about balanced eating right before a major U.S. holiday. Scratch that. Not just any holiday. The one that's probably most associated with overeating, Thanksgiving. But I just read this wonderful post all about finding balance in your life. Today's author, Nancy, said it's okay to balance fun foods as part of an overall nutritious diet. When Thanksgiving rolls around tomorrow, for us it may be, fun food day instead of just a fun food meal. But it doesn't have to become fun food week or fun food month. Enjoy the holiday. Enjoy the company. Savor those bites. Express gratitude. But a holiday like this does not have to completely derail your path towards optimal health and wellness. All right, that'll do it for today. I hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday. And yes, I'll see you back here tomorrow, even though it's a holiday where your optimal life awaits.